What's up, everybody? It's Trey Smith with College Game Time back with another College Game Time YouTube video. Before I get into today's discussion about the forgotten four of the Pac-12, the four remaining teams, Oregon State, Cal, Stanford, Washington State, a um, couple rumors, and, 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 and I'm, I want to, if you're a fan of one of those teams, just hear me out is all I ask. Hear me out on what I have to say today as it pertains to a possible move to the, Amer the American Athletic Conference. But before we get into it, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment at the end, share it with a friend. And if you're feeling generous, go ahead and leave a super thanks here on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. And it's super hot where I am currently located. Um, so the Forgotten Four, let's just start here. They got screwed. So if you're a fan, of those fan bases, like you got screwed point blank. And on this channel, we've been covering the realignment frenzy. And as someone who is pro big 12 in the midst of all this, obviously um, um, it was nice to see the big 12 establish itself in what I would call bulletproof itself um, um, as, as, a, as a conference. Right. And when I say bulletproof, I just mean, I think with the moves the Big 12 has made and the rumored final two, it seems like they're possibly going to make on the basketball side of things. You know, I think they've positioned themselves where when realignment shakes up again, whenever that may be, a year, a month, two years, I think they've solidified themselves from, from being poached as they have been uh, time and time again in the past. But I made a video about that earlier this summer. Uh, a couple of the things I've felt like they needed to do was get Colorado, Arizona. I also had UConn in that mix. I didn't necessarily foresee them going and snagging all the four corner schools, but hey, that's how the dominoes fell. Oregon and Washington to the Big Ten, Utah, Arizona, Arizona State, uh, and Colorado to the Big 12. And now you've got Oregon State, Cal, Stanford, and Washington State kind of in limbo right now. Not sure what's going to happen. Not sure what they're going to do. And, um, you know, there's, there's some rumors right now that the American Athletic, the AAC, has already been in contact with those schools. Uh, I've seen rumors of a potential merger with the Mountain West. Um, and that's kind of what I want to get a discussion with today. Uh, you can down in the comments because, honestly, get all things considered, I think there's a lot of silver lining you can find with all four of these institutions joining the American Athletic. And I'm going to go through it here in just a second. I think it obviously would bolster the AAC and maybe even argue they, they become that fifth conference. Um, but I also think that these schools, given their current situation, could, gain, could, could stand to gain the most from joining the American. But let's start with the Mountain West, right? There's rumors of a merger and the travel, like it's the only hope, it's the only option, it's the only thing they can afford. But if you look at the Mountain West Conference and the revenue distribution disparity between the Mountain West and the American, it's pretty significant, right? It's more than what most people might know if you've never like read up on it and studied it, meaning like a lot of times we think, oh, okay, all the G5 are kind of in the same pool of money. It's not very much and it's not even close to being as much as the Power Five, sure. But they're not in the same pool. They're not in the same ballpark. The American actually is kind of in a, like a tier of its own between Power 5 and the rest of the G5. See, the Mountain West probably brings in, I think their media revenue is at about $35 million a year. So they pay about $3 million a school, I think with like 10 schools, maybe. And so if you add four more into that pile, not sure how that divvies up. Whereas if you go over to the American, they earn enough. I mean, they've got a billion dollar deal right now with ESPN. They're in a contract right now. Um, and they're able to pay out an average of about seven, seven and a half million per school. But the way they distribute it, the, the top end schools in the American earn between eight and 11 million. I think Cincy ended up pulling 11 million uh, the, the year they went to the playoff. Now, does that even touch Power five numbers? No. Does that even touch what Pac-12 fans of these particular institutions were hoping to get um, this, this next go around? No, not at all. So I'm not sitting here saying like, oh, it's comparable to what you would have had. What I'm saying is, is given the circumstance that you're in, 
it, it's the best you could poss- probably get right now. Definitely better than the Mountain West, but also what the American has in this particular media contract, and this is per SB Nation. I've been searching everywhere trying to find the direct source. I've even reached out to the Americans, the people I know with the American conference inside the building myself. Uh, in fact, as it pertains to the rumor of the American making contact, I got a little bit of a standard answer. I'm, I'll read it to you, though. I got it earlier today. Um, when I inquired about what's what's going on as far as the Americans uh, conferences contact with these four schools and it was your standard, you know, hey, Trey, thanks for checking in. Uh, our longstanding policy is not to comment on any institutions when it comes to expansion or potential membership in the conference. So I'm afraid I can't be much of help in that respect. So I get it. It's fine. But. I think if you're paying attention and reading the tea leaves, there's some conversations happening. So um, let me back up. Yeah. So the top end school is eight to 11 million a year. Not sure what made me rabbit trail to that. But oh, it was the clause, the clause, the media clause. And per SB Nation, there is a clause that would allow, uh, uh, that can be triggered if there is a shift in the conference membership. In essence, if there is a change in conference membership that changes the media value of the conference, the contract can be renegotiated. And I think that goes both ways. Meaning if they lose a certain amount of teams, that could trigger it. But if they gain a certain, you know, tier caliber of teams, it can trigger it. Now, um, don't know what is required for that clause to be triggered. I know when UConn left the American, that did not trigger a renegotiation. And even when Houston, UCF, and and, and uh, the other, uh, since he left, it did not. And I think it's because they were able to sort of reload with some teams. But I would think that if you could swing four former Pac-12 institutions You've got that Cal Stanford rivalry, which even though it hasn't been like a national, you know, relevant rival as of late, it still has a lot of history to it. Bringing those teams in, I would think would trigger the clause and maybe be able to negotiate a bigger contract. Not saying it's going to be in the same ballpark as what you would expect as a power five team, but it also would be far and above what you would get as a G5 team. So then that leads to the next issue, which is travel. Well, I want to pull up this graphic for you right here. And then, yeah, I get it. It's, it's, it's definitely a concern and an issue if you're one of those four institutions. However, I think if you can creatively work the schedule out to where most of the traveling you're doing is either to Texas or Oklahoma, that certainly going to save or or be more cost efficient than if you're having to travel all the way over to, you know, South Florida (laughs) every trip, uh, uh, every other trip. And look, I get it. Texas and Oklahoma are still further than what they're used to and definitely further than the Mountain West, but it's not as far as the, you know, entire going to the complete East Coast, particularly the Southeast Coast. Um, I think if you look at this layout for the conference as a whole, this makes a lot of sense. Um, you, you know, you've got your Navy, Temple, Charlotte, ECU, Memphis, Tulane, UAB, South Florida, and FAU over on the east. And then on the west, you basically have your Texas teams, Tulsa, and then your incoming Pac-12 teams. I think that's a solid conference right there. I think that's a conference that has some teams on the rise. I think that's a conference that could maybe even sort of revitalize uh, uh some programs that have been successful in the past uh, at a high level that, that ha- have, haven't had a great history as of late, like Stanford, uh, uh, even Washington State and Oregon State. Let me say this on Oregon State. I'm going to pull a graphic down for this. I hope Oregon State wins the Pac-12 this year. I hope they go out winners of this conference, especially if this is the last year of the conference's existence, which is still almost unfathomable unfathomable to to, to 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 believe as a college football fan in fact if you go to collegegametime.com right now or right after this video the top article i have published is a quick like history lesson as to what's like led to this realignment going all the way back to a court case from 1984 i would encourage you to read it especially if you're a college football historian and a fan uh, regardless of how old you are but anyways if this is the last year i hope oregon state 
goes out winners. You know, the team that stayed, that's hung in there. I mean, they stayed. They didn't really have any other options. And I know some of you right now, too. You're hoping maybe the Big 12, something can happen with the Big 12. Maybe one of the other, you know, a merger with the ACC or something like that. I get it. I'm just not so sure any of that's really going to happen. But we'll see. I mean, who knows now? But let me pull this graphic back up. So you see, I think that's a solid conference. I think that's a conference that can compete, I think, with the playoff 6-6 six and six model, uh, with the 12-team format and the 6-6 six six model. You have access, okay? You have, you have just as much of an, abil- uh, an opportunity to make the playoff as, as, as any other conference, and uh, especially playing in this conference, because I, I have to think if you win this conference right here, you're going to be in the top six of conference champions. Um, and then finally... Uh, talked about the revenue and the travel, talked about the access. Um, and there was one other thing, right? Because when you're, when, you're, when you're realigning conferences or when you're making a shift, you've got to evaluate, oh, the exposure piece. You want to re- evaluate your revenue, evaluate access, exposure. Like I said, that contract with ESPN guarantees placement on ESPN, ESPN2, ESPNU, and ABC for mostly for the tier one games. And then everything else is streaming on, it's not just the tier one games, but um, they have a a pretty significant amount for a G5 conference, G5 conference, uh, as far as linear on on those outlets, but they're also streaming on ESPN plus. And again, if you're Coming from the Pac-12 where they were looking at going exclusively streaming with Apple TV where you would have to purchase an additional add-on to the already existing subscription just to watch Pac-12 football. Well, ESPN Plus, yeah, it's streaming, but everyone has ESPN Plus. Just about. Because you don't have to purchase a a secondary add-on to watch AAC football. You just have to have ESPN Plus and you get access to the entire library of ESPN. So everyone has it. So as far as the exposure, from an exposure standpoint, I mean, you're actually gaining in a lot of ways, at least as it pertains to what you would be getting with either the Mountain West or if you tried to stick it out with the pack, whatever they end up doing. And maybe it is a merger. So if it's me, I'm on the AAC side, it's a no-brainer. In fact, I I wrote an article about Mike Oresco, the commissioner, reaching out to Oregon State and Washington State like last week, okay? Now that Cal and Stanford also are getting left behind, I throw them into the mix. And um, anyway, so I'm just curious to know your thoughts, especially if you're from one of those fan bases or if you're an AAC fan, what your thoughts are on that. And then if I'm on the Washington State, Oregon State, Stanford, Cal side, I mean, I'm giving this a hard look as a fan. Like, you know what? This might be the best course of action. Relegation sucks. The way this whole thing played out sucks. But you know what? Maybe just maybe our addition could at least get us, you know, double digit millions per year again it might only be a third of what we were thinking we were going to get um but it's a lot better a heck of a lot better than what's currently on the table so let me know what you think in the comments especially washington state oregon state man i know i don't i don't know if any stanford or cal fans have really engaged on this channel particularly but as i've been going through the realignment stuff uh, i feel like there's been a, a good amount of oregon state and washington state fans engaging and you know, I, I'm curious to know your thoughts, AAC fans, or if you're a Big 12 fan watching this, it's just a college football fan. Let me know what your thoughts are on this. That's it for me today. Trey Smith, College Game Time.